Okay, so I just want to say up front before I even get into this video, there's going to be Venom 2 spoilers, particularly the end credit scene. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would suggest that you might want to click off of this video because of the fact that I'm going to talk about them a little bit. It's really not detrimental to the movie if you know this. and. I think the cat's already been pulled out of the bag, but just in case, I'm just giving you a heads up. So, as you know, at the end of Venom 2, during the end credit scene, they show that Daily Bugle clip with Jay Jonah revealing Peter Parker as Spider-Man, and Venom goes up and he licks the screen. He goes, ooh, he looks delicious. And that's where it ends. Uh, obviously, this brought Venom into the MCU and possibly making him a part of No Way Home, which honestly would kind of make sense because they're making all of the previous Spider-Man movies a part of that movie. I mean, the worst kept secret in the world is that Toby and Andrew are going to be in that movie. It's the worst kept secret in the world. So it's interesting. And on a couple of different levels because of this. So this is all speculation on my part. I want to put that out there. Like none of this is confirmed, but it is kind of odd. Uh, Marvel's website and social media ignores Venom on Let There Be Carnage release date. So what's interesting about this is technically Eddie Brock Venom is now a member of the MCU and it's still a Marvel movie in general. So it's, it's being ignored. You have to remember there's something coming up and that's another contract renewal for Spider-Man with Sony and Marvel. I think there might be, I think there might be a cameo movie left. I'm not sure, but I know it's coming up soon. So, you know, here we go again, basically, with all those games. You remember all that drama that dropped between Sony and and Marvel? What was it? Not even, like, two years ago? And they made that big deal about it, and, like, they came out and said, look, we can't get the deal done. The thing here is, Sony has all the leverage now because Marvel has integrated Spider-Man pretty much into the entire universe of the MCU. and. Make no mistake, like, Spider-Man is Marvel's Batman. It's going to be tough at this point not to have him around. So it's like, Sony has all the leverage here. Okay, well, you know, we want to make a Spider-Man network of movies, and we want them all to be a part of the MCU so we can get a part of that money. And, of course, you know, is that really in Marvel's best interest? So I wonder, is this, this makes me think something's going on. Because wouldn't they have given, given them a shout-out? Yes. I know Venom is a Sony movie. I know. But he's still in the MCU now. So I wonder, did Sony just do this and not really get permission? Did they just like kind of give Marvel the finger and slip it in there and say, well, now he's in the MCU? I mean, nothing's really been come out and said. Though Tom Holland has been kind of winking at things and... I, you know, like this one, I have this up here. Tom Holland hypes Venom 2. But you got to remember at the end of the day, Tom Holland <laughs> is a Sony employee, <laughs> not a not a Disney employee, even though he's a part of their movies. Uh, he's still in her contract with Sony. So, you know, I, I really do wonder, like, is this is there some strife here? Because they're completely ignoring it. And this just, to me, signals... Okay, here comes the contract war. So now, like, these movies are even more leveraged into the MCU. And it's just interesting that, to me at least, that they are completely ignoring it. And the movie's a, a success so far, too, by the way. It's doing very well. It's very well with audiences. Audiences are loving it. I've already talked about that in two videos. Of course, critics are hating it. 
Look at it, it's now at 59%, so it's officially rotten. You know what's funny? Is if this had been an MCU movie, if this was officially an MCU movie, which it kind of is now, uh, these critics, they would be, they'd be loving it. They'd be bending over, waiting for Venom to take them out. But it's a Sony movie, so no, no, they're not going to love it. It's funny, too. And you know I'm not wrong. Any MCU movie, these people fall over themselves to praise it. It's a triumph. It's amazing. It's the greatest thing ever. And they never give a Marvel movie a bad score. That should tell you something. Audiences, they love it, though. So, I don't know. I, I, find, this, I find this worth discussing. This is a, an interesting thing. Are there, you know, backroom arguments going on and... Were they allowed to do this? I haven't heard Kevin Feige talk about it. So, interesting stuff. Completely ignored. Success ignored by Marvel. Not talking about it at all. Something to think about. So anyway, before we go, I do have one quick little rant. I wanted to talk about Spider-Man 74. For anybody who read it. 74 issues of build-up on Kindred being Harry Osborn. And undoing one more day, which if you don't know what that is, uh, that's where they used the devil <laughs> to erase Mary Jane and Peter Parker's wedding. Now, it was hinted at that it was going to be undone for the 74 issues. And I don't care what anybody says. They heavily hinted that it was going to be uh, undone and they were going to be married again. It didn't happen. Instead, they just undid that stupid Gwen Stacy. Uh, Norman Osborn thing where they had kids that's undone, which is good. That was horrible too, but it's just funny. Like they just refused to undo it. And the whole justification here is that the reason they undid it is because Mayday Parker is going to be the one that kills Mephesto in the end, which is kind of cool. I'd be cool with this. They, they tease it at first. They had it like as Peter Parker. I don't know if they show, let me see if I can, yeah, this, and then it changes to this, which I would be fine with. I love Spider-Girl. Uh, that was a really awesome comic book back in the 90s uh, where Peter Parker and Mary Jane are married. You know, they're middle-aged at this point. Peter got into an accident, so his leg is kind of messed up, so he basically becomes a cop and retires as Spider-Man. And, of course, she has his powers right gets him in high school and becomes a uh, spider girl after finding out you know her father i don't remember if she knew or finds out that he was spider-man and she takes up the mantle it's an interesting idea because the character's back in high school and spider-man's the father it was a good book it really really was so like this is this is a man this is a passing of the mantle that worked very very well but of course with the with the wedding being undone she never existed she's in an alternate universe now but apparently they're saying the reason that Mephesto interferes and did that was to buy time for himself because their daughter is going to be the one that kills them and they're of course getting back together in the comics whether or not that'll stick or not I don't know but it's saying okay well they're still going to get back together and that whole trial made them stronger which they were already strong together. They should have never been divorced. But, you know, it's just irritating that Marvel does this shit. It was 74 issues of a giant dick tease, basically. Which is typical of Marvel. But anyway, it was really annoying. 74 issues, I was very invested. And then this was not paid off. And, you know, <laughs> I, I suppose the joke's on me for thinking Marvel would actually do something like that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Venom. What's going on with Marvel and Spider-Man? I think there's something, I think there's a conversation to be had there. Why are they ignoring Venom? And of course, Marvel Comics sucks. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know how you guys think about all, what, let me know what you guys think about all this. Also, if you would please like, subscribe, share the video, make sure you're still subscribed, hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. I do watch parties, play video games over there. They're always fun. Follow me over there and come hang out. Also, make sure you subscribe to Yellow Flash, my other channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. 
I do a lot of live streams over there that I don't do on this channel, usually smaller and a little bit more personal. So make sure you follow me over there and sign up.